Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Shonaka said, O Sutta of great intellect, O my Lord, the knower of all philosophical principles, please narrate to me the essence of the Puranas in detail. How do good conduct, good devotion, and power of discrimination flourish? How are base feelings dispelled by good men? In this terrible Kali age, all living beings have become almost demoniac in character. What is the effective method of remedying this? Now, tell me about the greatest means to achieve the most perfect wheel, the holiest of the holy modes. What is that, the practice of which particularly purifies the soul? What is that which enables a man of unsullied mind to attain Shiva? Sutta said, O foremost among sages, you are blessed indeed as you are desirous of hearing. Hence I shall ponder intelligently over the greatest of the sacred lore and tell you. O oh dear, listen to that divine panacea evolved out of all religious tenets, heightening true devotion and conducive to the pleasure of Shiva. It is destructive of the great fear of the python of Kala, death. O sage, it is the noble Shiva Purana, formerly narrated by Shiva himself. For the benefit of the people in the age of Kali, the sage Vyasa has abridged it out of great respect for the sage Sanat Kumara on being instructed by him. O sage, there is nothing other than Shiva Purana for the purification of the mind, especially of the people of the Kali age. It is only the intelligent and the highly fortunate man who has accumulated great merits in his previous birth who will be drawn towards it. This Shiva Purana is the greatest and the noblest of the sacred lore. It is the form of Shiva, and as such is to be served and realized in this world. By reading this and listening to it, the good man becomes very pious. By all means, he instantly attains Shiva's region. Hence, every endeavor of men to read this is desirable. Listening to it with loving care yields all desired results. By listening to this Purana of Shiva, a man becomes sinless. After enjoying extensive worldly pleasures, he will attain the region of Shiva. O sage, those who listen to Shiva Purana, the noblest of sacred lore, cease to be mere human beings. They undoubtedly must be considered as manifestations of Rudra, a form of Shiva. Sages consider the dust of the feet of those who habitually listen to this Purana and recite it equal to the holy centers. May those who wish to attain the seat of salvation listen always to the holy Shiva Purana with great devotion. Those who listen to this Purana, even for a muhurta, 48 minutes, half that period, one-fourth of that period, or even for a moment, will not suffer from mishaps. O Lord of sages, the man who listens to Shiva Purana crosses the ocean of worldly existence after burning the great forest of karma. O sage, the merit that accrues from all gifts and all sacrifices becomes stabilized after listening to Shiva Purana. Particularly in the age of Kali, there is no greater virtue conducive to the achievement of liberation by men, O sage, than listening to Shiva Purana. There is no doubt that listening to Shiva Purana and reciting the names of Shiva 
is as efficacious as the kalpa tree in yielding one's desires. If such good results are obtained merely by listening to Shiva Purana, what am I to say about the result when Shiva abides in the heart? Thus, the sanctifying story of Shiva Purana definitely must always be resorted to. The three stages of bhakti, by acts of worship and service, reciting prayers, and meditation, are fully explained in it. It must be listened to with great respect. This work consists of 24,000 shlokas divided into seven sanghitas, compendiums. The first compendium is called Vidyeshwara Samhita. The second is Rudra Samhita. The third is Shata Rudra, and the fourth is Koti Rudra. The fifth compendium is called Uma Samhita. The sixth is Kailas Samhita and the seventh is Vayaviya. Thus, there are seven Sanghitas in this Purana. This divine Purana of seven Sanghitas, named after Shiva, stands on an equal footing with the Vedic texts and accords an achievement superior to everything else. One who reads the entire Shiva Purana, without omitting any of the seven Sanghitas, can be called a Jivan Mukta, a living, liberated soul. O sage, the ignorant man is tossed about in the ocean of worldly existence till the excellent Shiva Purana reaches his ears. Of what avail is listening to many sacred texts and other confounding Puranas? The Shiva Purana alone loudly proclaims its readiness to grant salvation. O best of sages, a sinner remains contaminated till he hears Shiva Purana with great devotion. If one wishes for the greatest goal, liberation, one shall recite at least a shloka from Shiva Purana, or even half of it. He who constantly listens to Shiva Purana, fully comprehending its meaning, or simply reads it with devotion, is undoubtedly a meritorious soul. Lord Maheshan, Shiva, is extremely pleased with the sensible man who listens to Shiva Purana when death is imminent. Lord Shiva accords him a seat in his own region. He who adores this Shiva Purana with great devotion enjoys all desired objects in the world and attains Shiva Loka. The holy Shiva Purana, the sole possession of a devotee of Shiva, should assiduously be resorted to by a person who desires happiness here and hereafter. The holy Shiva Purana that accords the four aims of life, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, must be heard and read with great devotion always. Shiva Purana, the greatest harbinger of perfect welfare among the Vedas, Itihasas, and other sacred texts, must be thoroughly understood by those who seek salvation. This Shiva Purana is forever the greatest resort of the knowers of Atman. It is the noblest object worthy of adoration for good men. It suppresses the three types of distress, physical illness, extraneous attacks, and divine calamities. It accords happiness always, and it is very pleasing to all devas led by Brahma, Hari, and Isha. With extremely delighted mind, I bow unto Shiva Purana forever. May Shiva be pleased by this recitation and bestow on me eternal devotion to his feet.